Lenore Tiefer, and I have been the leader of this grassroots New View campaign. We organized this capstone conference in Indiana in October 2016 to celebrate a decade of work and to conclude the campaign. We had created a special feminist project to challenge the medicalization of sex, and we had taken on useless diagnoses, big pharma, phony medical treatments, biased research, harmful genital surgeries, the whole landscape of misinformation and misleading thinking about so-called female sexual dysfunctions. At the conference, we had a lot of interviews with members of the New View campaign that you're going to see, and they will tell from their point of view what's been the important themes for them, the true meaning and insight of their participation. Although I've been the leader of this campaign, there would have been no campaign if not for the many people who participated. This is a, um, a subversive group, a subversive <laughs> meeting, and uh, we really try to do things in, in a unique way. So when the New View came around, um, I think Leonor welcomed what I brought to the manifesto or to the, the concept of the factors influencing sexuality from culture and social psychology. I tried to deconstruct sex and pluralize it, make it diverse, uh, and get, get women out of this tyranny of the orgasm mm -hmm. and tyranny of being erotically honeymooning with their partners for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And where, if they weren't, then you know they were substandard. So that's how I came into contact with Leonor, who was talking about it not in the lesbian context, mm -hmm. but in a larger mm -hmm. context. And so, you know, we hit it off, and I love the way she thought. Her book title was great. Mm -hmm. I had written a book, sim a similar kind of book for lesbians. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we collaborated after that because we were on the same social constructive construction or deconstruction right. uh, trajectory. I think one of the really digress from your question, but one of the really sort of special things about all the New View events, conferences that I've been to anyway, is they feel like such a family and such a community and such a kind of embracing space, which is not to say that there aren't critical questions and challenges and debates that people have or disagreements, but also that you feel like you're kind of in this space of broadly like-minded people. Meeting Leonor and seeing what New View was doing and the manifesto was such a, an impetus for me to get back on, like to renew my commitment to uh, activism and to uh, the political projects that, that have always been so important to me. You know, I think as scholars, if you don't have an activist component, you end up kind of just talking to yourselves, you know, the activist component is crucial. It, it lets you really connect with, you know, I don't know, just taking risks, being brave. I actually think that being brave is one of the most important qualities that we can nurture in students and ourselves, you know, I mean, because being smart isn't enough, you know, you have to like combine that with a sense of, like, you know, calculated risk taking and, and community and, you know, kind of coming together with a group of other people who are doing like-minded things. I was working on a book chapter for my first book um, that had a, a whole chapter about women. I asked women what they felt about female Viagra. And so I wanted to know um, just more of the history because that had started coming out in the New York Times, I think in about 2004, that all these failed attempts of Pfizer. And so then I found the new view actually the, the reverse way, like starting with all these failed attempts of Pfizer to make Pink Viagra, and then found the new view and was just thrilled. For more than 15 years, the little blue pill has been a champion for its creator, Pfizer. But what about a pill for women? Finally, you know, there's a lot of talk lately about the new female sex patch. It's not a pill, it's a patch. It's basically like a lady Viagra. It's called Intrinza. And based on the response so far to this ad campaign they're running, I think it's going to be a huge seller. This was a, a classic example 
of creating the need for new drugs by helping to essentially create or sponsor the creation of a whole new area, a whole new medical area, a whole new disease, a whole new dysfunction called female sexual dysfunction. The problem with hypoactive sexual desire disorder, as you point out, is that without, um, without a clear sense of what is normal desire, you can't have hyperactive sexual desire or hypoactive sexual desire. And normal sexual desire is not a scientific concept. This is a subjective, interpersonal, cultural, historical. So I think the diagnosis itself is questionable. And then there are so many problems with the drug. I think one of the most formative moments for me um, in these last 16 years of activism was sitting in a um, sexual dysfunction conference with probably 500 people in a large conference room. And I believe it was Leonor who was at the podium and asked the audience, how many of you are affiliated with a pharmaceutical company? And I would say two thirds of the hands went up. That was over 10 years ago, probably 15 years ago. So I think we can imagine that it's even more now. But to me, that is what we're up against. And you know, the, the blurry line between medicine and markets, um, that means our research, our websites, everything is shaped by pharmaceutical industry influence. Let's just say the next thing we're doing in this campaign is that the FDA is going to evaluate the testosterone patch. They are expecting me. And I'll do the best I can. But it would be nice to have some other people. And whatever happens, we have to be prepared. Leonor and the New View campaign were up against one of the biggest companies in the world. The FDA hearing was set up like a debate. Procter & Gamble presented their data. Then the FDA reanalyzed that same data. The public had a chance to weigh in as well. My name is Leonore Tiefer. As a psychologist with over 30 years of teaching, research, awards, and publications in sexuality, I see today as a perilous moment in the history of women's sexuality. Intrinsa is not a glass of Chardonnay, and yet we have already seen that it may well be promoted with a giggle and a wink as the female Viagra. The judges were a panel of expert doctors. Finally, at the end of a 10-hour day, the panel voted on whether to recommend Intrinza for approval. So we now reach our fourth and final question, and that is, are the efficacy and safety data adequate to support approval of TTS? No. 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 I want to thank the committee for their hard work and also our participants in the Open Public Forum. This now concludes our advisory committee meeting. Thank you. I think the New View is a, is a great template for what should happen in, in terms of responding to other medicalization campaigns. Uh, it's, it's a small campaign, it's a small group, but with a huge voice. Basically, the five of us have um, um, created this event that is tonight and tomorrow. And it's a project of the New View campaign, which is an educational campaign to challenge the medicalization of women's sexuality. And for most of the history of the New View campaign, it's focused on the pharmaceutical industry uh, to challenge the pink Viagra, quote unquote, and all of those other corporate methods of making women feel bad about themselves and making a buck uh, while they're at it. But uh, it, we, got, we continued doing the anti-pharmaceutical industry work, but a couple of years ago, we got really interested in another aspect of the medicalization of sexuality, namely the involvement of cosmetic surgery, genital cosmetic surgery. 
David Matlock is the founder of cosmetogynecology, a new field of genital cosmetic surgery. Hello, I'm Dr. David Matlock, and I would like to talk to you about one of our designer laser vaginoplasty procedures, our autologous fat transfer to the labia majora. In this procedure, the patients will state that the labia majora are flattened, and they want the labia majora to be more youthful and aesthetically enhanced. Dr. VJJ does not solve problems. He makes the most of them. Everything becomes more medicalized on every, from every point of view. Whether it's got to do with anything, I mean, whether it's, it's not just sexuality, it has to do with mood change or children who supposedly have a DHD or, I mean, you look across the board, there's more and more diagnoses, they're proliferating more and more drugs, so it's, it's everywhere. It's, yeah. it's huge, powerful corporations who can uh, shape opinions. One of the things I'm proudest of is the conferences that the New View organized. There were in six altogether, and in 2010, the third one was held in Las Vegas, to challenge the cosmetogynecology industry convention that was being held the same weekend in a Las Vegas hotel. We called ours a counter conference. We have created a counter movement that is, you know, they create conferences, we create conferences. They create manifestos and publications, we create manifestos and publications. Press releases, press releases, you know, we have mirrored and pushed back on everything that they've done. We talked about, you know, how the new view has shifted the way we think about things, and that that has permeated all those those books. What has shocked me actually is the sheer number of people from around the world who have said, "We are working on these issues. We have read your work. We are we have read the manifesto." We know about the social movement you've created in the U.S., and we are doing that in our country. Sad and upsetting that these counter-movements have to happen all over the world, and that medicalization is not just a U.S.-based phenomenon, um, but at the same time, how amazing to see a global uh, community of activists, women's health activists, gender health activists, mm -hmm you know, who are taking this forward. As we planned this capstone conference, one of the major goals was to archive our materials for future scholars' reference. Rachel Liebert made six fantastic posters that show the various phases and activities of the New View campaign. The, the conference and the posters and all of our planning allowed us to conclude the campaign in an intentional way. So many feminist projects, they just peter out or they limp along, and we thought, well, let's just declare victory and have a major celebration. But the you know the common thread of all this stuff has has just been trying to, you know, reclaim a kind of um, space for feminist uh, uh, critique. That and and what I've taken so much from the New View campaign is is just the way that we as scholars. Mm -hmm. um, can intervene. It's yeah. not just, we're not just criticizing stuff. We're not just writing a nice critique of the medicalization of sexuality, but there's important opportunities for us to actually intervene and make a difference and make change. But the one thing that really stuck with me was your courage for staying up to not having pharma funding. And so when I was an officer of the ISR, it was kind of your courage that, made, that really kept me going to maintain that. And I feel so strongly, and I would fight for that. And it was really thanks to you as a role model. I mean, I'm really sad. I'm sad that it's ending. And I suppose, you know, people of, of my cohort and my generation were all kind of like, 
what is next and how do we how do we keep this fire burning? Read together. Let's wish together to continue to ignite the spirit in our world's beyond, causing trouble where trouble is found, and celebrating the wild in our bodies and desires. Together we extinguish in the new light. May our magic burn bright. So that's it. That's the end of the gala, and that's the end of the new view. I love you all.